It's a bit like building a rocket ship while you're flying in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cost of advertising mm-hmm. in the U.S. is much larger. The cost of everything. Yeah. <laughs> We have this debate all the time. It's like, where's more expensive? When we were hiring, we were like, oh, no one's going to apply to these jobs. We're going to have to use a recruitment agency because no one knows who we are in the mm-hmm. States. And we ended up having like a thousand applicants. Like it was crazy. Welcome back to Have You Heard, the social media podcast by us here at The Social Shepherd. My name is Zoe. I'm the managing director and one of the co-founders here. And today I'm really excited to be joined by Maria. Say hi. Hello. (laughs) Maria is our managing partner and our first ever hire of our US team. Um, We now have a team of three, including Maria in New York, and we have Amber over in Miami as well, which is really exciting. So... Welcome to the UK and welcome to the podcast, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, cool. So today we're just going to chat a little bit about um, where we're at with the US side of the business and how sort of everything's going. Um, it's a bit of a funny one for me in particular, and I guess from from you as well, because when we interviewed you, I guess we were very honest about the fact that it was kind of going into startup mode again, but there was the resources of a larger business in the UK. So that's something that we're really trying to like um, figure out how to balance and like integrate at the minute. But it'd be good to just understand like how your first couple months have been. You can be honest. Yeah, um, it's been, it's been really good. Um, I I am familiar with working at kind of smaller agencies. Mm -hmm. So the startup vibe isn't totally foreign, but it's a bit about, it's a bit like, building a rocket ship while you're flying in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, it definitely has challenges, but, you know, I I really like the idea of building something mm-hmm. and, and having, and it's a bit unique in the sense that there is a larger business behind it. So we're not totally alone mm-hmm. in what we're doing. Um, so th- that's been really helpful to have that backup resource. And is it like reassuring yes. as well, if that makes sense, you know, yeah. I think. No, it's super reassuring because I know that it's been done before and that you guys have done it successfully in the UK. So it's good that there is a model mm. to look for, look at in terms of how can we replicate that in the US. Mm. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I guess I'm really intrigued because there's like little differences between the UK and the US that we've kind of like clocked on internally. And that's even from like acronyms that we'll use in the world of digital and like even little things when we were hiring you all, like the healthcare system is so different. So uh, there's differences just from an owning a business in the US yeah. versus the UK. And then there's also differences from just like a digital standpoint. Um, So I guess if we sort of kick off from like a digital standpoint, I mean, some of the things that have shocked me about the US is like, I mean, we kind of knew this already because we've done paid activity um, for clients out there for quite a while, but serviced it from the UK. CPMs are insane in the US. And like paid media budgets are wildly inflated in the US. Yeah. Yeah. which is really interesting, but I think like the advertising industry in general, like, I don't know if in your hotel you've been like watching any TV. I haven't. But I, I, (laughs) she hasn't had any time to watch TV. (laughs) Um, But when like I go over to the US and I like even TV advertising Mm -hmm. is so different. Like it's so much more like brash and in your face. Yeah. And I, yeah, I guess to be honest, I probably had more exposure that way than you've maybe had this way because of the type of work that we've done Mm -hmm. but it'd be interesting if there's like any key differences you spotted while sort of working with us over the last couple months yeah I definitely think the the cost of advertising Mm -hmm. in the U.S. is much larger I have cost of everything yeah (laughs) We have this debate all the time. It's like, where's more expensive? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, particularly in New York. Yeah. Then, of course, the costs are going to be significant. But I know, for example, I've worked with a brand in the past that was based out of the UK. And they were like, well, why can't you just do like a buy on the TikTok for you page? Like our other agency, it was only, you know, 300K. And I was like, because it's the US market. It's like a hundred times more people. Yeah. <laughs> so it just everything tends to be more expensive just because the you're paying a lot more mm. for that 
massive reach that's available in the U.S. Um, but, you know, I, I am seeing it shift. So like certain platforms that are trying to retain brands like a meta, their CPMs have been coming down. Interesting. Whereas br- a, a platform like TikTok, we've seen the CPMs going up. I think the size of the U.S. is something that like, I think obviously like wherever you live in the world, you, like, your kind of world centers around that. Mm-hmm. So people from the UK are like, yeah, the UK is massive. Like it's this big thing, but it's tiny. It's a small fry compared to the US. And I think you've got so many different like climates in the US as well. Mm-hmm. So it's just a bigger task in general. I think it's probably uh, not even really, but more comparable to us when we do European yes. wide advertising as opposed yeah. to just focusing on the UK, which to be honest, actually the majority of our clients are European and we'll cover multiple territories yeah. for them. Now we've got a few where we would just focus on UK, but we, we do cover a lot. And like acronyms. What acronyms well, have you found? I the only I, one I've I've noted with you guys is like tofu and mofu. I think that's a TSS thing though. Oh, like it I, is? Yeah. Well, I think some people would use top, middle, bottom of funnel. Yeah. Like that's like your standard funnel, but I guess we do tofu, mofu, bofu. Yeah. Um, Which is cute. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes people look at it and they're like, why are you talking about tofu? Yeah. As in like the food. Um, but I guess... To be honest, I don't, I can't think of any of the top of my head, but I know when we've been like going through decks and stuff, it's kind of been like, what does, what does that mean? Or I'm confused about that. I feel Mm -hmm. like there's just a lot of isms everywhere. Yes. Um, But I think that's normal to be honest in, in digital. And then I guess if you flip it, you've got the other side of it. We're just, I guess, working in America and employing people in America is completely different. Yeah. I think the big one for us is like healthcare, like that's been a big learning curve for us to have to learn about sort of supplying that for team members. But I guess that's just the way it is in America. Yeah. And I think, I don't even think that's specific to, you know, international businesses. Mm. I think even businesses in the U S are very much, it's still a, a, a a hurdle that Mm -hmm. they need to overcome because it is, there's so many different providers. There's so many different forms of coverage, Mm. you know, and it's, it's really, daunting Mm. to figure out like, okay, what am I going to offer my employees? Like what is most cost effective for me as a business, but what's cost effective for the employees. And there's so many different levels of Mm -hmm. coverage. So I completely understand that it is a total nightmare having to deal <laughs> with the healthcare system yeah, in America. Yeah, I think for us, because we've no exposure to it, it's been, but we've, we've got there in the end. Like we we know we know what's kind of going on there. And another thing, which I was really surprised by was when we were hiring for those first roles. So it was social media manager, videographer, and your role. We were like, oh, no one's going to apply to these jobs. We're going to have to use a recruitment agency because no one knows who we are in mm-hmm. the States. And we ended up having like a thousand applicants. Like it was crazy. And then looking at it and through speaking to applicants, it became clear that there's like a bit of a different relationship with employees and employers in the States, maybe in people, not anyone that actually we've employed, but a lot of people, it's more common to see job hopping potentially over there. Yes. Um, Particularly in the agency space. Yeah. I mean, agencies, to be fair, us in like little old Bath you know, there isn't a crazy amount of competition for us here from an employment perspective. Like mm-hmm. I think in the Southwest, we we probably are one of the larger options right. if you want to work here. I guess in London, people probably hop a little bit more because um, it's slightly more competitive. But yeah, that was that was a bit of a shock in terms of like, it was great to be fair because we had were able to pick from so many amazing candidates, but that was a, a definite sort of change. Yeah, we actually had a chat last night um, and someone had asked me, you know, why I applied to the social oh, shepherd. Oh, so intrigued, say. <laughs> yeah, so they they had said similarly, they, they, you know, they were like, how did you find us? And they're like, were you nervous? Because it was going to be like building a whole new thing. And I sort of went through the, the thing that really appealed to me was the philosophy that the social shepherd mm-hmm. has in terms of how they value their employees. Mm-hmm. To me, finding a place that really values their employees as their number one resource, because ultimately that is the case. Pret- yeah, with an age like your people or your product basically. So I found that very reassuring and something that I was really looking for is, is a place where I felt like my work was going Mm -hmm. to be valued and that I wasn't just like in a revolving door of people that could easily be replaced. Yeah. No, I mean, that is super important. I think as well, like 
that's quite like a rarity from like what you said and what the rest of the team has said in the UK as well. Like there's definitely a different expectation of what team members expect from their employers. But I think there has been a bit of a shift like post COVID across the globe in terms of what people expect work to do for them and what they expect to do for work, if that makes sense. Whole other topic on that one, but I think it's good. And I'm glad that that kind of like shone out in the... No, it definitely, definitely did. Um, and I think also, you know, not just valuing the employees, but the, the really defined focus on career growth and Mm -hmm. career path and setting goals and really building up that, like who your resources are and really Mm -hmm. wanting to grow. I just think people are really hungry for career growth. And I think as an agency, if you're not growing, you're kind of moving backwards because it does change so quickly and it's like as people develop in their careers they get hungry for bigger opportunities they get hungry for like different client opportunities and stuff like that so that's why we push people so much on progression but interestingly one of the things that we've actually sort of learned over the last year or so as we've you know scaled the UK side of the team out to to 60 is the not everyone actually is a career person. And so it's kind of like understanding what do you want in your long term? Like, and how does work, or how is work a part of your bigger goals for your life type Mm -hmm. thing? Mm -hmm. And I think Gen Z in particular, they're not, whereas like whenever I came into the workforce, I was just like, I want to work as hard as I possibly can and get as senior as I possibly can really quickly. But they're kind of looking, what do I want from my life? And how does work serve that? But um, yeah, progression is super important. And whether that's, I want to progress to get a pay rise in the next like six months, or I want to progress to be here in terms of a role and responsibilities. I do think that what the social shepherd is doing from, from a philosophy standpoint is very unique. And I think that it is more of, of a trend that that's what people are looking for in their jobs is, you know, every agency says that there's work-life balance, but very few actually practice that. And I think the social shepherd is really, really good about making that a priority and making people's well-being a priority. And that was really the main thing that when I was looking, I was like, okay, this is a place where I know I can grow. This is a place where I know I'm going to be valued. I know I can speak and have a voice and feel heard. And that work is not going to rule my life. Yeah. It's super important for us. And like, I'll put my hands up and say, we definitely don't get it right all the time. And like, we're learning and growing as we do this basically. And we've got strat day on Friday where we're going to go through all of this. Um, but yeah, it it is really important. And we want like longevity from our team members and stuff. We want, you know, it's fun. It feels like we're all growing up together. Yeah. (laughs) Does, um, do people here tend to apply through LinkedIn? Is that, uh, is that really? I think that would be our predominant source of recruiting. I mean, like we would use recruitment agencies the odd time if we really senior roles sometimes or like more specialist roles like data analysts that have experience in social or using a particular tool because I know that's like the go-to in the U.S. is really LinkedIn is is the preferred platform and that's a difference in New York as well actually is that you have to put salaries on job descriptions whereas you don't legally have to do that in the and that's a more recent law change yeah I mean I think it's a good thing and I think it's like a good thing for the employer as well and we've just um made a rule internally that we'll be doing that across every job description that goes out from the agency across like the UK and and everywhere. But like it, it just, it's a waste of time for an employer to interview someone, they're a great candidate and then their salary expectations are like up here and then you can't meet that. Like it, just, just be honest. Do you know what I mean? And it's good for, if you're looking for a job too, because you know, okay, like even if this role sounds great, this isn't what I need from a financial perspective. So I do think it is really helpful. I hope other states start doing it. I guess to be fair, one thing I have noticed on the New York ones is like the brackets are crazy. Like you'll have like 50K to 250K. Like what do you really want to offer Yeah, but I think also that's because if they're hiring, for example, if you're hiring remote employees Mm. and you're working in a different state, the expectation is very different. So if you're working out of Ohio, you're not going to be expecting as big of a salary as if you were working out of New York. That's so true. Cause we, um, remember whenever I came over and we were doing like the, so for anyone that doesn't know at TSS, we have clear salary brackets and levels and, and job roles aligned to them. So we try and be as transparent with everyone as possible. 
But in the UK, it's really easy because we just need a like a London and then out of London. So we've yes. got like two salary brackets. Whereas yeah. we were like, Miami, New York, Ohio. Like how does this all yeah. like tie together? And then you've got a match it to day rates as well somehow and it's very complicated <laughs> yes yeah I think um at least my experience in the advertising world it's very much around like hourly rates yeah um as opposed to day rates uh, we really only use day rates for like productions which is interesting um, yeah fair enough we do well we split everything down into hourly now because of our project management tools and stuff like yes. that um cool and then I guess just I'm just getting my little podcast plan up um where do you want to take it like in 12 months time where what would your dream be and then we can redo this again in 12 months time we can and we can it. see if yeah, we're there yeah, yeah. <laughs> um well I definitely want to expand our client book which I'm already working on mm -hmm. you know because I want to have you know, diversity from a financial perspective as mm -hmm. well. So we're not totally reliant mm -hmm. on one client over another. Um, so I would love to get at least in the next 12 months, I'd like to have at least 10 clients yeah. brought on. Um, would definitely like to see the revenue grow mm -hmm. substantially. So for me, like I would love to see it in like the two to three million range mm -hmm. from for revenue, at least for this first year. Yeah. Um, and would definitely like to have more staff hired as well. So I'd love to see, you know, like a team of 10 to 12 people by the end of that time as well. That is aligned with our plans. Mildly lofty on revenue. <laughs> 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 but in terms of team size, yeah, I think we put in that we want to see 10 to 12 team members within the next 12 months. I do feel for you guys though. And I think it's great that you've all come over. Yes. For the next couple of days. I think it's really good for morale yes. as well, just to see like that we're not alone, that there is a whole team mm -hmm. of, of people that have done this already, that they, they've built this business, they've built the process. So I think it's really helpful to learn from that and also, you know, have that pre-existing way of working so that we can duplicate and modify yeah. for the U.S. as needed. Um, but it's... It, to me, it's like very comforting to feel like I have more resources available. Yeah, nice. No, that makes sense. And then final question for me is, um, what? so we've got our growth goals. What challenges do we think we're going to see whilst trying to hit those? Um, well, I think because it's sort of a, we need the clients first before mm -hmm. we sort of grow the team. It's like chicken and egg. It is yeah. very chicken and egg. So I know from my expectation that I'm going to need to be wearing many hats for yeah. a while, uh, which is fine. I honestly really like that entrepreneurial vibe yeah. and having to do, sort of have your hands in all those things. But I think that is hard for people that are maybe more junior or less mm -hmm. experienced and not familiar with the way that a small business or a startup environment mm -hmm. operates. You know, it's very chaotic. It's very um, sort of agile and changing all the mm -hmm. time. So I think if, if it can be hard for people that really need a super yeah. structured kind of way of working because it is a bit more free form. Mm -hmm. So I think that is challenging mm -hmm. when you have new staff coming in and helping them to get their feet mm -hmm. in a place where, you know, one day is very different from the next. Yeah. Um, so I think that for me is, is kind of what I see as the daunting task is yeah. just, you know, keeping everyone as organized as possible, understanding that it is going to be rapidly expanding. We are going to be rapidly growing. We're going to have new clients brought in maybe before we have mm -hmm. the full support team in place. Um, but so I think that will be the biggest challenge is yeah. just keeping all the... And just like being able to, I mean, we've got a really good system from the UK in terms of resource management now in place where we can yeah. forecast. But you are right in the sense that we're very honest when we pitch. We'll be like, we can start onboarding in yeah. two to four weeks time type thing. But sometimes clients are like, no, we got to go now. And that is the way that it works sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think the biggest challenge is going to be just making sure that we keep everyone connected. Yeah. Um. But I think this trip will be really good, and I think, to be honest, I feel like you guys already speak with the UK team a fair bit. But just keeping that bond in there and making yeah. sure that we repl replicate the same culture in the mm -hmm. US, because I guess the culture that we have here is slightly more, slightly rarer, maybe to find in the US. It's much rarer. Yeah. So I think that's 
what I really want to try and do is kind of. Yeah. And that's also one of the reasons I was really interested in the role because that's what I want in a job. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, if they want this, then I can build it here Mm -hmm. and everyone will be happy. Lovely. Stunning. (laughs) Um, Cool. Okay. Well, I think we've yapped on for ages. Rob's going to have fun cutting this up. Um, But thank you so much. Um, And yeah, thank you for listening and like, subscribe, click all the buttons. Um, And thank you for watching.